Hi, I'm Dr. Susanna Bazzoni. I'm going to talk about focus today. Do you struggle with focus? Do you find that everyone struggles with focus? I certainly do very, very often. And of course, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because we're constantly binging and dinging. We have access to so much information, but we can't focus on any information because all the scrolls and all the pop-ups and all the information we receive is clouded by that draw for our attention from media, from our phones, from you name it. And so if you want to build your focus, it's like training a muscle, right? And there's tips on how to try to do that. Number one, know what you want to focus on. So I think about a Broadway stage that's completely black, right? And then the white lights come up and what do you see? You see Grizabella, the glamour cat, right? About to sing memory and everything, every person is just mesmerized because the focus on her from that spotlight and from the contrast of complete silence and darkness around her is so great that it just forces you into that. But it's not that easy, right? So first we have to recognize what do we wanna focus on? So really get that clear in your head and make a realistic task. Then you ask, how long can I focus, right? Well, so don't try to focus intensely for longer than 90 minutes. Our brains aren't really set up for that. And if you are currently struggling to focus for 30 minutes, well then set a timer for 15 minutes. Just train your brain, maybe 13 minutes, something like that, and really bring it to focus on just one thing. And then you can retrain that, incorporate your eyes into that process to truly focus on one thing for some sustained amount of time with the expectation that you'll drift away and that you wanna come back, right? And so first knowing what you're focusing on, then making sure that you set a timer and don't allow your phone or anything to bing or ding around you. So get yourself an environment that will not be distracted or you can't see your emails pop up and you're not gonna be rung or texted or anything like that. Then set up your brain to cultivate the ability to focus again. Of course, that's going to require a good night's sleep. So look at the hour before bed and try to shut the blue light off. Try to cultivate a wind down hour as much as you can, or maybe it's a wind down 20 minutes to start wherever you are. But sleep is so important and it's incredibly hard to utilize our brain effectively if we are not well slept. It's just so pivotal. And looking at the first hour of the day, what do you do in that time? Are you starting the day running with your emails and the chaos right from get go? Or can you take a few minutes to center in, to give gratitude, to get in nature, to do a little bit of movement or some breathing or some meditation? You know, what does that look like for you? And to recognize that those pieces are really big if you want to effectively focus later on. And as you think about sleep, knowing that we have to kind of get ourselves to the state of sleep, recognize the difference between wakefulness and then allow ourselves to transition into sleepiness. Well, it's the same with focus. We can't expect to go from distraction, which is the common state of affairs all the time right now, to focus. So give yourself a little bit of a transition time to get there. That's okay. What can you do in that transition time? Well, some people use binaural beats. Right, what are binaural beats? Well, you can look them up pretty easy. There's a bunch of free things that you can try at 40 hertz binaural beats, um, which is just basically a sound. It's, it's a sound frequency that's the difference between two sound frequencies that comes to 40 hertz. And the reason for that is, in a nutshell, is that 40 hertz is, th is thought to stimulate uh, your ability to concentrate and to get your brain working um, uh, more effectively at that time. So what you might try it's worth a shot, is somewhere between three to 30 minutes of listening to binaural beats prior to whatever your focusing task is and see what happens. Finally, a lot of people talk about caffeine. Caffeine might be helpful, it might not be helpful. So know yourself and certainly stay under 400 milligrams of caffeine if you choose to do it. It's not for everyone. It's certainly not for people that really struggle with anxiety a lot. Um, and you know yourself. So recognize, is this getting me better or am I so caffeinated that I can't even do one single task at all? So I hope that gives you a couple tips that you can utilize. Thank you so much. And I hope that you bring into the spotlight what it is you truly want to accomplish 
work on it, be compassionate in your journey, and here's to your best self. Thank you so much for your time.